Hello, my name's Claire, and in this video, I'm going to share my um, professional story. So I uh, entered, I've always been into health, well-being, fitness. I uh, ran for South of England or um, the county when I was younger, um, represented the university uh, in netball and the county. I um, have always been into sports. I uh, was a fitness instructor, gym instructor, personal trainer, group exercise class leader right from my early 20s. I was also trained in holistic therapies, deep tissue massage, sports massage, um, healing massage. Um, and I worked in a, in a gym in London, actually for Merrill Lynch. So, um, so for the, all the people that worked in the office um, of the City Bank, and they had a gym underneath. And I worked in there for about five or six years. I did an awful lot of classes. Um, I used to teach body pump, spinning, aqua, aerobics. I used to love it. And I used to do personal training on the side, fitness instructor in the gym. Um, you know, and I was always in the gym myself. I loved doing rowing and taekwondo. Um, all the classes I absolutely loved. But I fell in love very early on with core stability. And that led me to Pilates. Um, so when I moved from London, when I was pregnant with my first child, um, I, uh, oh, my, my ex-husband and I took over a business called Planet Janet at the time. Um, that was when my daughter was 10 months old. And it had f seven rooms that were used for complementary therapies and classes. So I then taught and specialised in Pilates. And that was when I was probably about 29. Um, so so my, that was when my mind-body um, classes started to come into fruition. Um, I also did training in pre and postnatal then as I was having my children. Um, I'd already trained in um, working with older adults, back care. So I had an awful lot of experience in um, movement-based classes, health, fitness, well-being, um, specialised in Pilates for about 15 years. Um, during that time, I was running the centre as well. So I was around all the complementary therapists, experiencing them all. We had, a healthy, we had a healthy cafe selling organic food and a healthy shop as well. Um, but, and I also used to dip in and out of yoga classes. But interestingly, it wasn't until uh, the break, the, the, my marriage started to break down that I really fell in love with, with yoga. It's almost like yoga found me rather than me finding yoga. It'd been around me all my life and I dipped in and out of it. But I didn't really experience the power of it until um, around the, the time of my marriage breakdown. And um, that's when I did my first 200 hour yoga teacher training. And since then, I've done about a thousand hours of training. I've trained, uh, I've done the 500 hours yoga alliance. I've trained in yin yoga, meditation and pranayama. Um, I've trained in somatic, somatic yoga for healing recovery, yoga for cancer, um, yoga, yoga nidra. I've done um, chakras, adjusts, assists, um, the full spectrum really. I've done a lot of training in fascia. Um, I've, I've, done, I've been to live dissections. I've been to conferences on fascia. I've done fascia for Pilates training, a lot of embodiment training. So, um, you know, my journey within this industry has been never ending. And it's really, and I've also been on a big spiritual journey within that as well. So again, from my early 20s, I've been reading books on spirituality, but that stepped up in my early 30s. And it then stepped up um, even more around the time of my divorce. And I've been on a lot, I've done a lot of um, self-development and healing since then, applying a lot of practices to be able to navigate that situation. So I feel as though it's, if you look back up, you know, if I look back at my career as a continuum, it's almost like everything's been leading me to this point to be able to deal with this diagnosis in the way that I have um, using the tools. It's interesting that when I signed up for the Somatic Yoga for Healing and Recovery course, I was doing it to help others. And it's funny how these things come to us because actually now it's been, you know, it's been about applying it to myself. And I think that's what I've really learned. So I've been trying to help other people all my life, but actually the one person I haven't really stopped and really unpicked and really looked at to help is myself. 
and that is making my goose my hair stand on her now as I'm talking about it um and that's part of the cancer personality that I think Garber Mate talks about in when the body says no and you know even though I've also always felt physically fit and capable and competent and I can do this um I knew I had too much responsibility around the time of my divorce and I did have moments where I felt like I couldn't cope um, but I also felt like I dealt with it as well as I possibly could. And, you know, I didn't break down. I did deal with it. And I learned from that. And I, you know, I think I was stronger for it. But I hadn't given myself the time to really reflect on what I needed, what, where, why I was in that situation, what I had done, what, you know, what, what was it about myself um, that brought, led me to those situations and really, uh, I, I feel that there's still more work to do on it. But what I've learned this year, what I've seen this year, is that underneath this capability, there is a, there was a lack of self-love, um, even though I never necessarily understood that or felt that. Um, so, and that's really empowering when you can, you know, take that lid off and look at that, because then it's only going to enhance my experiences moving forwards. And it could be that I've got a block there that's 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 stopping me from from uh, opening up a door. So so the, there's so much work that, that can be done. And I just feel so grateful that it's sort of mirroring my professional journey. Um, so after my so when I so then I did my training in yoga, I then set up Harmonized Training Academy um, in about 2014. So that was before my break. The marriage broke down so at that point i had two premises i'd op we'd opened up a second site and we'd rebranded the business as revitalized by then so i had two healthy living centers and i think what happened then was that we spread ourselves too thinly so then the businesses and we had had the crash of 2006 the businesses weren't we, you know weren't going as well as they were when we had the one site because i think we spread ourselves too thinly um so i set up a separate company harmonized training academy and I think that was always um, where my future was going to be. But, um, so we had the businesses on the market at that point. Um, and the marriage then broke down. I then managed to sell both of the businesses. As part of the marriage breakdown, I knew I never wanted to run them on my own. It was far too much responsibility. Um, um, but, you know, the... the you know, but the businesses, you know, were also, you know, also part of my story and really um, I learned so much from having the businesses. You know, I really learned as I went along, um, you know, had some really real highs within the businesses, but then also lo lots of learning experiences as well. Um, but I really had a wonderful community around me by the time I had my diagnosis. So I had sold both the businesses by then. But I had a real community with the second business that I sold later on because, um, you know, I, everybody in that business, I feel, had been attract, law of attracted. You know, we had been a really good team. I'd handed the business over to um, my manager and a beauty therapist that so was kept in the family, which was really nice. So, again, I had so much love and support. Um, and, of course, I was still running the training school. Um, and... So I've been running the training school now for seven years. It's been super successful. It's been so um, rewarding for myself to really make a difference in people's lives. I feel like that was my is my life purpose, um, inspiring others, empowering others. You know, I have lots of beautiful messages at the end of courses saying that I, you know, how I've, I've changed lives or made such a difference in people's lives. You know, when you're embarking on a yoga teacher training, and spe especially, it, you know, it is about the journey within as much as it is about uh, finding your voice as a teacher. And I often um, find that it's, you know, understanding where different people are coming from and helping them on their own paths, um, especially with en enhancing confidence. I feel that that's more empowering what I offer people than the actual course itself because obviously you know the information's there you can teach people um uh you know the asana and the and the practice and give feedback but to actually be able to um tune in to what somebody needs on a more subtle level 
to um, give them the confidence that they need to be able to step out and show up in the world. I think that's what I've really um, been able to help people with. And so, and that's kind of then carried on with this diagnosis, is that I feel like I've been able to use all that um, past learnings, growings, teachings and expansion to then apply that to the cancer diagnosis and then really do some deep work on myself. Um, so I've, I think I've un intellectually understood, understood a lot from my divorce onwards. I think I've, um, you know, had processed a lot. I don't, was using a lot of techniques to simplify my life. I was letting stuff go. Um, but I feel as though the cancer diagnosis has taken me to, to a new level and I feel really positive about the future. I feel really positive about where I'm at. Um, and I know there is some work left to do and that feels good. It feels good that I've, and this has only come up for me literally in the last few days, that there's some deeper work for me to do from my uh, teens and early twenties. Um, and that feels good that I've seen it. And it means it's the t right time for me now to be dealing with it. It wasn't the right time in my past. So I can forgive myself for not dealing with it in the past and 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 you know and the, the coping strategies that I used were right for me at the time they've got me to where I am now but I believe now's the time to go back and and heal those those traumas to free myself um even more moving forwards um and so I'm doing another journey therapy for that on Wednesday so it is a never-ending journey um you know we're all along the path somewhere along the path and um you know, I feel really blessed with my um, chosen um, profession. Um, I feel really blessed the way it's evolved over the years. It's almost mirrored the healing journey that it started out very physical and then it became, you know, mental, intellect, then it became emotional uh, and, that, and, and then spiritual. And now it's like balancing all of those together the mind, body and the spirit, which of course is my, you know, mind, body movement that I've been in, bringing in that deeper layer within the, the yoga realm. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I just feel so blessed that I'm able to sort of share what I learn as I learn it myself and apply it and live it. And I think that's what this cancer diagnosis has really been able, it's, it's just, well, it's been a natural thing. I, I'm living the truth rather than reading about it or understanding it or having to try and apply it. It's just happened. And in fact, um, I remember when I was going through my divorce and I was feeling angry and I was feeling resentful. Um, and I remember um, thinking, you know, because I'm still on a very spiritual path then, thinking I'd like to see Buddha, uh, you know, have been in this situation and not react and be completely calm and be really grounded and centred, you know, you know, with how I, I felt very attacked and felt like I was having a lot put on me, you know, both from the divorce and then from the VAT review and, you know, that kind of, it's not fair, it's on my shoulders, bearing so much, still managing the, the, the three children, which I always put first, and I'm so grateful I did, and they're amazing. Um, but that, uh, that feeling of, I'd like to see, um, you know, a guru, be in this situation and how, see how they would deal with it. And actually, I feel as though I've kind of demonstrated that with the cancer diagnosis, with um, the um, COVID, with the homeschooling, with the business, you know, not making any money and being, you know, very, just literally ticking over to keep it ticking over. But I really haven't had any fear and I haven't felt angry and I haven't felt resentful and I haven't felt it's not fair. I've really been able to stay present and see the blessings and see the opportunities. Um, and I think that's come from, you know, the, the tools and the techniques I've had from my professional background, as well as the work I've done before from my past traumas and life situations and actually how they really feed into each other. Um, you know, so I do feel like I've, it's, and it has happened spontaneously. And so, you know, wherever you are on your path, whatever practices you're doing, or even if you're starting from now, don't underestimate the value it will have. Don't think about the end result at the time. Just trust in the unfolding. Because for me, I have, you know, I've just been practicing and now it's just happened. It's just this spontaneous arising of presence that's allowed me to deal with this cancer diagnosis in the way that I have. And it's gonna help with my 
career. It's going to help me be more compassionate. Um, you know, the way I come across in my yoga teacher trainings and my Pilates teacher trainings and the, my classes, it's going to inform my teaching, the language that I use. So, you know, every situation you have is so valuable in so many ways. Um, if we can slow ourselves down, tune within, quiet in the mind and, and, and feel those blessings. And it might come across as being counterintuitive to start with, but the potential is there um, and it's available for us all. We can all tune into it. It's there. So I really hope that this background has helped you to understand where, where I've come from, where I'm at now. And um, I really am sending you all so much love and blessings on your own personal paths, wherever you are, you're exactly where you're meant to be, trust in the unfolding. You know, I've been in some really dark places when I, you know, even when I say that out loud, it brings it back straight away. I've faced so much pain, so much trauma, um, that I really feel like I've come through it and I, I, you know, I can see such a positive future for myself. Um, and I really hope that that's something you can tap into yourselves. Um, so if you're interested in practicing with me, it was the yoga that started, I think, my, my deeper healing journey. Um, that really helped me through my divorce. Um, HarmonizeOnlineStudio.com. There's lots of different practices on there, both physical, mental, and yoga nidras. I'm going to be adding to them all the time. Um, but also um, a cancer section that I'll be adding to as well. There's going to be free resources on this site as well. Um, it's free access for 30 days if you just want to trial it and see how you get on. Um, if you are interested in embarking on a yoga teacher training, then it's HarmonizedTrainingAcademy.com. If you've got any questions, please do reach out. Um, so sending you all loads of love, well wishes, blessings, um, light along your paths. And I'm with you, I'm for you and hand at your back, sending you loads and loads of love. Claire from Conscious Chemo.